Goldie Taylor joins us, Managing Director of Goldie Taylor Brand Communications, a New York-based media consultancy. Uh, knows a little bit about the uh, Syracuse case, I guess on a first-hand basis from experience, but not with the specifics of that case. Goldie, welcome to the program. I appreciate your coming on. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You went through this kind of abuse when you were in high school. I did indeed, myself and many other young women who attended my high school. All right, tell me about what happened and, and tell me what you think is happening at Syracuse and at, at Penn State as well. Well, I think what's happening um, at these schools and unfortunately at so many institutions across the country is that, you know, a culture of enabling has taken root where, you know, it is more beneficial for that institution, for that coaching staff, for, you know, those faculty administrators to simply look the other way even when there are young victims involved, victims as young as 8, 10, 12 years old. And even in one case at Penn State, where purportedly, you know, a graduate assistant walked in on the abuse, Mm -hmm. and it was still allowed, you know, really to continue for a number of years later. In my case, it was 26 years ago, and, you know, I I really understand from uh, from the point of view of the young men and women who were involved here, about the culture of shame and blame that really comes on us. It is as if the predators themselves pick out children who they know won't tell. They pick out children who they know don't have great relationships with their parents or with other strong mentors in the community. They pick out children, you know, who are most vulnerable, the least of these. And they do it from all walks of life, rich, poor, black, white, Hispanic, you name it, it's happening in this country. And what I found, you know, since making my own disclosure a couple of weeks ago, is that rape, incest, sexual assault is the number one underreported crime in the country, or group of crimes in the country. And that has just got to stop. You know, without reporting, unless we're willing to speak up, this kind of thing will absolutely continue. And that's the unfortunate part about all of this. And you know, I've always, uh, I've always been told in the past that uh, a lot of people don't speak up because they're afraid they won't be believed. And in many cases, when somebody has spoken up, they weren't believed. There was a young woman in my high school, and I remember she was not associated with this coach, but she was a victim of sexual assault outside of school, mm-hmm. and she reported. And I remember how she was treated, how she was demonized, how other students called her. Um, you know, epithets we can't repeat on air. Um, and she was 15 years old. Yeah. And so in my position, I certainly wasn't willing at that time to talk about what happened to me and what I knew was happening to others because I knew that I would be blamed, that I would be shamed for it. Um, I didn't even tell my own mother for fear that she just wouldn't believe me or believe that I hadn't done something to make this happen to me. Now, many years later, my mother and I's relationship is is a great one, and I look back now, and I feel bad because I didn't trust her, that I didn't trust her enough to fight for me. Um, And now that I'm, you know, in my 40s with with daughters, you know, a little bit older, just a little bit older than I was back then, I hope that they trust me enough that if something like that happens to them, that they can trust me enough that I'm going to be their safe harbor, and I'm going to fight for them. Goldie, what happened What happened to you? This was a high school football coach? This is a high school assistant football coach mm-hmm. who uh, systemically picked out girls like myself, uh, plied them with alcohol, marijuana, on and off campus, mm-hmm. before and after school. I've always said it never happened during school hours, but certainly after school hours and weekends, where he would um, you know, sexually molest all of us. Um, some of us were under 16, some of us were older than 16. I was exactly 16. Um, And, you know, in doing so, I think some of the young women involved may have thought that they were old enough, mature enough to handle that kind of what they thought was a relationship. But what they didn't know is that that coach was taking advantage of his position that he was Mm -hmm. violating a contract that he has with your parents, with you, and with the school system. He has a a contract of stewardship. Did he ever ever get caught? Not until now. Um, No one had ever spoken up until I did just a few weeks ago. 
But I'll tell you what happened. And for the first maybe 48 hours, I was feeling stupid, alone, afraid, ashamed, and all the things I knew I would feel. And then the dam broke. And I started getting emails and phone calls from other young women who had been victims of this coach. And, you know, on the one hand, you know, there was a, uh, there was a validation in not being alone. But on the other hand, I was all that much more mad at myself for not speaking out then and saving these young women some grief. Goldie Taylor, Managing Director of Goldie Taylor Brand Communications. I appreciate you telling the story and the relatability of it. I'm sure it has touched a lot of people. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.